All you need to do, just stick to your gut and you'll be fine. Which is what Josh got to do. I was just going to share as well, I think there's another strategy that's happening where in the West, we become uh, valued by what we have. Um, not that having things are wrong, but that becomes the value of our being, of what kind of a house we've got, what kind of a car we've got. And what ends up happening, I'm already losing the battle because now I'm on the ground for weakness. But if the value of my being is I am a son or a daughter of the Almighty God, and I have value in that existence, different. Yep. And I keep getting compared to what I've got and comparing myself to others. I'm always losing. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, this, this whole sticking to your dad thing, look back in biblical words, is it's called abiding in him. That's what you said, if you abide in me, you will bear a lot of fruit. But if you don't, you can do nothing, right? So, and my battle is to abide in God. That's why you know that verse we read when Jehoshaphat was praying and he said, Lord, we've got no power, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you, we are sticking to you. Right? We've got no power against this bully. We don't even know what to do with this bully. Like, if we look at him, we're going to fall over. But our eyes are on you. Yeah? So in other words, my battle in this journey of growth is not to try to stop doing bad things. I know this may sound shocking, but you can at least what I'm trying to say. But that's not my focus. My focus is not to try to stop doing bad things. My focus is to get closer to God. I'll give you a very example. Imagine we're in a dark room. It's pitch black, right? And I want to get rid of the darkness. What's the best thing for me to do? I can say things like, get out darkness, get out, get out. And try to get the darkness out. Get out. What's the best way to get rid of the darkness? Turn the light on. Same with that spiritual life. We're living in the darkness. We're trying to get rid of the darkness. Stop doing these bad things. Get these bad habits out. Stop these sins. Just turn the light on. So we focus on turning the light on. Once you turn the light on, darkness is speed. You see what I'm saying? So my focus is to speak to my dad. Not to try to resist the, the, the enemy or, or punch him out. It's not going to work. No matter what I do, I'm dead me. I'm not saying you should do bad things, but I'm saying that that's not my focus. My main strategy in this journey is to stick to my dad. That's my main strategy. Yep. You guys know, so I, I grew up in, uh, in the Augustinian church. I don't know if you guys ever go to Augustinian or you go to Augustinian, but there's a very holy priest there, one of Shui. So he's one of the oldest priests in Sydney. Um, I'm, I'm very blessed to, to, to confess with Mutshui. And Mutshui is a very unique and I love a confession story. So you go to the confession with Mutshui, and I promise you, you can ask anyone at the screen, the Lord you can say any sin you want, and you always have the same reaction. You can say, I uh, will not I shot 30 people on the weekend, just, just to see what happens. Always the same reaction. Ask anyone at the screen, you'll always go, Mm. <laughs> Lack of prayer. <laughs> I want to do this, I did, I did this. Yeah, oh, lack of prayer. I <laughs> Everything's a prayer. Because it took me years to understand what's coming up, but that's what he's saying. Pray, focus on prayer, because that's sticking to your dad. As soon as you leave your dad, and then he says to me, Your problem is lack of prayer. You're not speaking to your father. Because you're speaking to your father, you do all these things. You just say, I, I can tell you, listen before you can tell me. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the list of sins. Because it's standard. Right? As soon as you, he, the way he says it, as soon as you unplug the light bulb from the electricity, it goes off. Standard. Plug it in. Don't try to make light. Plug it into the source of electricity. Stick to your dad, then these things will stop. You'll stop getting defeated. You see what I'm saying? I don't forget, I once got really annoyed at a point. Everything he said, everything I said, like, I want a wise and strategy, not, not, not a prayer. So, so one time I got annoyed, I'm like, I want to be serious, man. Like, everything I said, I said, I pray. Are you saying that if I pray, because he's weeping on the Egbeya and praying the seven prayers of the Egbeya? I said to him, Are you saying that if I pray the seven prayers of the Egbeya, I'm going to be a saint? Is that what you're saying? And he goes, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> Try it. He was convinced. I felt that he was like thinking, finally, it's time to get it, finally. It's all about sticking to your death. 
Make sense? Okay, let's go back to our scenario of the beam. I'm going to play around and move that, right? Okay, so think with me now. So, you want your data to play around, because you're going to change the world. You will be able to keep it right, you will leave it, and this big bully. If the bully wants to bash you up, right, in this situation, what strategy, let's go to the other side, what strategy do you think the bully should be using to bash you up? What should be his strategy? What's his aim in this situation? Yeah. To get you away from your dad. Right? That's his whole strategy. All he wants to do is to move over your dad and you're off. Okay? So how do you think, let's kind of take the power of the bill. How do you think he can do that? Take away from your dad. What can he do to convince you to leave your dad? Let's think about it. What do you think? Okay, you like? Sorry? Like? Manipulate you, try and trick you into doing something that you know. Trick you to so what you said to him, he tried to trick you. Remember the devil is the liar and the father of all lies? All you'll do is he's going to lie to you, to try and get you away. But what kind of lies do you think he'll say to you? Like with the um, first sin, the devil said that he will um, give us power and all that. Brilliant. Yes. So the first thing, okay, I wasn't going to mention this, but I'm going to figure it out. So the first thing, right? This, this, oh, I'll have to mention it, sorry. The first thing, so Adam and Eve, think about this, because this is very important. If we understand Adam and Eve's sin, we understand all sin. Because that's, that's the root of it, right? That's the original sin. Adam and Eve, what did they do wrong? What, what, what was so bad about what they did? Eat the fruit. What was so bad about They want to be independent from God. Exactly. Adam and Eve believed that, you know what? Exactly said, I don't need God. I can be God. Right? I don't need God. I can disconnect from God. I can be from God. I don't need God. Right? That is the root of all sin. Think of any sin now. We don't talk about lying, swearing, all that. Just a symptom of the actual problem. The actual problem is inside, I think. I don't need God. I can live without him. I'm not going to die. You see, isn't that what the devil said to you? You're not going to die. Relax. Right? If God's nice to have, you're not going to die without him. But you know what the truth is? You are going to die. Without God, he's dead. But I'm convinced that, ah, you know, I don't need God. That's the problem. So what the devil or the bully can do to you is say to you, you don't need your dad. You can take me. You don't need him. Just show me anything. Boom. Right? See what I mean? Again, that's, that's the, probably the best trick the devil uses with us. How else do you think the bully can get me away from my dad? Yep. How? Like, I don't know. It feels like the bully thing. Like the bully was saying, exactly. So distract me. Say, hey, hey, look at this. There's something nice for you. Come, come get it. Come. I step, step around with that. Boom. Gone. Exactly. What else? I'll put a list of things in here. Yes. Lull you into a false sense of security. Like, come on, you think fine. I'm not going to hurt you. Yes, exactly. Yeah, very serious. I was like, come on, I'm going to some good stuff for you, man. I'm going to have fun for you. This is fun. I'm just boring with that. Well, I'm just fun here. And then convince you that God's always going to be there and He'll always be there to accept your offense. So, like, you can sin now, confess tomorrow. Exactly. So, come now, I'll get bashed now. <laughs> Yep. Anything else? He doesn't love you anymore. Oh man, that's what I heard. Are you reading that? Right? <laughs> exactly. He doesn't love you anymore. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. He does, he's, not, he's not looking out for your best interest. Right? Don't listen to this stuff. He wants to have a bad life. Listen to me and I'll, I'll, I'll give you the, the good life. And again, boom. No wonder why I get bashed. Right? Another thing as well is, so imagine, imagine I do a mistake. The bully will say to me, oh, you've upset me now, you've upset me, you're going to stay away from you until he just relaxes a bit and calms down and then go back to me. Yeah, hello. So I'll stay away from my dad and I'm getting bashed all along. It's like someone saying to you, oh, just, I hate this life of the devil. When you've sinned, oh, you better wait until God relaxes and then calms down and you upset me. 
if, you know, that's not saying, that's not saying, oh, I'm actually too sick to go to hospital, wait, just wait, too sick to go. They're, they're going to be very upset at you in the hospital if you go like that. Wait till you get better, then go to the hospital. But, but we believe it. We believe it. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm best to God right now. Right? So anyway, so the devil will use a lot of lies because the whole battle is, are you speaking to your dad or not? He's going to do everything he can to speak away from your dad. And that's a battle one. You see what I'm trying to say? So that's our focus. Our focus in this journey of growth is to speak to my dad. Not try to stop doing bad things and focus on the devil. It's speaking to my dad and everything is all about. Make sense? Does that make sense or not? Any comments? I'm almost done actually. Any comments thus far? Now the good thing, cool thing to remember as well is not only is the battle not yours, but we already know the results of the battle. The battle's won. The battle was won 2,000 years ago. There's no question about it. You know what it's like? So I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a, like a, a football soccer fan. Imagine I'm watching a match, right? That's recorded. So I'll read. Really, uh, I do that sometimes. I really watch matches. I know it sounds strange. People don't really like the sport, but I, I sometimes watch matches more than once, twice, three times. So sometimes I'm watching the game, and I know the score at the end. I know. So I'm going to say Egypt is going to win three 0 That never happens. But basically, <laughs> imagine I'm going that way. No, no, no. I know Egypt going to win three one. Say, right? And I'm watching the game, and the opposition scores a goal against Egypt. It's one meal to the opposition. Uh, so I know the score. I'm going to go, oh, no, I can't believe it, though. I know the score. <laughs> well, why would I get stressed? I know we're going to win. But same with my life of God. I know the score. I know the result. God's won. It's finished. It's finished, right? So I, I experienced a small defeat in my life. Oh, I can't believe it. No, mate. We know the score. We know his resurrection. We know he's going to resurrect me. We're going to win. You see what I mean? So, so I know the score. Exactly the Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat went knowing the score. We're going to win this. That's why he didn't bother carrying weapons. He went singing. Right? So we don't go to fight for victory, we go to claim the victory. Does that make sense? So when you say show up, I'm showing up to claim the victory, not fight for victory. Make sense? I'm, I'm almost done. I've got one last point to make, but anyone want to speak? Because I'm speaking too much. Anyone want to say anything before I conclude it? Yes. I just have a question. You sure. were saying like when you're about to do the battle and like you're trying to tag in God and you're trying to stick close to God. What does that look like really day to day life? Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so what does that really look like day to day? Sticking to my dad. Let's shake your deep thoughts. Any thoughts guys? How do I speak to my dad? So talking about this bully example, what's up with anything? So I'll go hang out, what do I do? Yeah? I guess um, maintaining the relationship is really important because like in, the, in, that, um, in that situation, if the child didn't have a relationship with his dad, he wouldn't have went to him in the first place. Definitely, so definitely. Else, definitely, maintaining a relationship with your dad. How? Say it. Prayer. Prayer, what about what you're doing? Prayer. I know we don't like this answer. And, 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 and I often go to church, go to youth meetings, or maybe there's a new speaker coming. Let me see what say. Maybe there's a new, something new. But it's prayer. Okay, wait, wait, wait. wait, I hope this mission's going to be. That's what you do. Let's give it. Let's say something. Prayer. And come on. So at the end of the day, it's prayer. We want to find another way. It's prayer. It's spending time with you that. It's, 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 it's being still and quiet in His presence. Right? Think about it. If it wasn't prayer, how else am I going to get close to God? Or sitting on a bus? How else? What other way is there apart from prayer? And the Bible, of course, but to be honest, you can't pray without the Bible and you can't read the Bible without prayer, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking those one. But what else do you expect to happen? Do you remember it's logical? How else am I ever going to get close to God? I have to spend time in, in prayer. And by the way, the devil will make you do, going back to our example, he'll make you do anything except pray. He'll make you come to the youth meeting. He'll make you watch CTV. He'll make you read books. He'll make you do anything. Stand up and pray, and oh, the phone will ring. Oh, my back. Oh, itchy. I need to go to the toilet. He'll do anything except pray. 
He immediately he talks. It's easy to talk. But it's time to pray, and that's when, that's when the war is on. Because remember, that's the battle. See, if you're there, you want to get away from your dad. So he'll distract you, he'll distract you church, just to get away from your dad. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So it's all about prayer. And very, very practically, and I'm speaking to myself before speaking to you guys, we need a dedicated time each day where I stand in front of God and I invest in this relationship, in this growth, in this journey. I have to. I can't leave it up to chance to see what I'm feeling or to progress it. It's not happening. If I'm not praying, and I'm speaking to myself, I'm speaking to you guys, if I'm not praying seriously, it means I don't know God. That's what we around the bush and speak once. And one of the church fathers, St. Isaac Syrian, he said that if you think that there's another way to God except prayer, you're being tricked by the devils. Because why? Because the devil does not want you to speak to that. He'll do whatever it takes to convince you that you don't need to speak to that. Yeah. So I encourage you, go, go see the confession Bible. Say, I will not want to start this journey of prayer. Tell me when, how long, let's start together. Because I'm serious about it. Yeah. It's all about prayer. It's all about did that. You can come to 100 youth meetings. And you can spend your whole life at church. If you're not praying, waste of time. There was love in it. Absolutely love it. Yeah? Okay. So I know, I know tonight may be a big hit to the ego. Because I'm just talking, you guys can't do it. Right? You've got no chance. You have to sit to your dad. But that's the truth. Right? Our biggest problem sometimes is the ego. And by the way, I don't want to miss, mess the, the, the series up in the last week, but I'm going to be blunt with you guys. Talking about growth and stuff, we can't grow. We can't grow. And, and if you're trying to grow, again, you fall into the same trap of the ego. Well, I know a few weeks ago you spoke about the uh, parable of the soul. Right? Jesus, by the way, loved to speak about seeds. If you notice the Bible, he always spoke about seeds growing to represent the kingdom of God. But let's take the parable of the sower. In the parable of the sower, so obviously it's symbolic of things, right? What does the seed represent? In the parable of the sower, what's the seed? If you just said it after you finished the parable, you explain it. The seed is what? The word of God. Right? The seed is the one growing. Who am I in the parable? What, what resembles me in the parable? The soil, right? So I am growing. It's the word of God that's growing in me. See what I'm saying? I'm not growing. If I think I'm going to grow, I've got this ambitious to grow, I'm fooled. I think I'm the seed. I'm not the seed. Christ is the seed, the word of God. So Christ grows in me. See what I'm saying? It's actually the opposite. I should get lesser and lesser as he grows more and more in me. Remember St. John the Baptist said, I must decrease, he must increase. So if I'm trying to increase, I'm on the wrong track. Sorry to miss the series, but you know what I'm trying to say? So, so I should have ambitions to be a better Christian, ambitions to grow. No, I should have ambitions to die, and Christ lives in me, remember? It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Yeah? Someone once said that, that the Christian life is not about getting better and better, it's about getting lesser and lesser. The progress in this journey is for me to become lesser and lesser, and He shines more and more in me. And you don't see me anymore, and it's all Him shining. So the ego is gone. Right? I admit I can't grow, I can't do God. I admit, right? I'm poor, I've got nothing. Let's have a poor in spirit. There's the King of Heaven. See what I mean? But if I'm trying my best, and I want to be a better Christian, and I'll, then I'll miss the point. I hope you guys understand me. I'm not saying let's go out the way you want, but I guess I'm trying to shift the focus a bit from you know me, me, me to him, him, him. You see what I'm saying? Thank you guys, thanks for coming with me. Thank you for your time. I hope I didn't confuse anyone. If I have, I'll try to hang around after. You can come uh, have a chat with her. Any other comments or anything before we finish up? Thank you.